What's up, everybody? I am your host, a creepy shop owner who has weird bumps on his face, and that is my co-host, a young Canadian girl who has self-esteem issues. And welcome to the Grindhouse Syndicate, where, as you may know, we decided to take a little break this week so we could enjoy our Halloween weekend. But we did want to put out something short and fun for you guys. And we decided to talk about a very nostalgic thing from our and hopefully your childhood. It's one of those things that's like a gateway into horror when you're a kid. And even though Halloween is now officially over, we want to keep the spirit alive. So we are going to do one more Halloween episode. You know, before we all get bombarded by Christmas. So on this episode, we are talking about R.L. Stein's Goosebumps Season 1, Episode 1, The Haunted Mask, which kicked off the greatest kids horror series ever, and I'm pretty sure was like the biggest Goosebumps episode ever. So we're still doing Halloween over here. Yeah, I think that this was, I won't say the best book, but this was a, a really good book. I know this was the first the the first one they did in live action. And they did it really good, man. Yeah. This is this is uh so you had this as the VHS I did growing up. Which so. was an awesome VHS cover. Yeah. I remember popping this thing in the VHS player quite a few times, rewinding because it never gets rewound and uh rewatching this thing. This is this good. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Goosebumps book and a favorite Goosebumps episode. Oh, well, as far as episode of the show, I, I'm going to go with this. It's the one that, because it was on VHS, I watched more than any of the other ones. I have watched them all through recently. As you know, Iris got really into watching them, specifically this one. Book-wise, man, that, that's a hard one. I would really need to look at the list because I'm sure as I'm reading through the list of Goosebumps, I'm, I would be like, oh, that one was really good, and that one was really good. I did really like Say Cheese and Die. That's, That's one good. of the earlier ones I read that I loved. Stay Out of the Basement oh, was an yeah. awesome one. Yeah. Those those two, I think, I think, so I've read actually The Haunted Mask after I watched the show, mm. so it's a little different. But yeah, I'm I, I probably between those two. I was a for the show. For the, this has always been my my favorite one because of Halloween. It it's a Halloween thing. But if I were to discount this one, like say they you know it didn't take place on Halloween, I think I would probably go with Stay Out of the Basement for the show, and for the book would be Werewolf of Fever Swamp because it had a twist ending. That kind of made me really love twist. Like I, that was one of the things that got me into twist endings. It was very like, you know, in Night Shyamalan type ending where it's like, what? Well, you, uh, but the the episode of that is a good one too. Yeah, the books all were like that. And that was one thing R.L. Stein was like a master of is ending every chapter on a like a oh shit. Yeah. And that way you have to go to the next chapter and start reading. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, all right, I just got to read the first two paragraphs of the next chapter, and then, yeah. then I'll stop. And then ending the books and these awesome twist endings. I think maybe M. Knight got this from R.L. Yeah, stuff. maybe. <laughs> also, Monster Blood. That was another oh, really Monster good Blood one. Was the first about one. That. It was the first one I had, actually. Yeah. I borrowed it from somebody and read it. And that was the first Goosebump book I ever even read. Yeah. All those mentioned. Yeah. Great books. Also, we put up some pictures of our Halloween and awesome yard decorations. So if you want to check that out, head on over to our social media pages and feel free to show us some of your Halloween costumes and decorations. We love to see what your creative minds have come up with. And by the way, you Season of the Witch fans, wow, you guys go hard. You guys have pushed the shit out of that episode, making it one of our biggest episodes we've ever had. So thanks for that. And uh, a little PSA. If you're not watching the show from, you need to. Because I promise you'll be hooked on it. Yeah. 
Well, here's what I'm going to say. I kind of regret because we watched first season a, a, a long time ago. Yeah, I, then, s- I started watching the first season when it came out, and I told you, so we, we've been there from the beginning. Yeah, and then whenever I went to watch this season, I had to go back and watch all of the first two seasons. I binged them and then realized that they weren't going to release the whole season. Of, so I watched like the first episode or two of yeah. season three, and I'm like, oh no. I gotta wait a week for this. Yeah. Uh, Why are we going back to cable? Just give yeah. it to us all at once. We love it that way. Well, we're almost done with season three, so you know if if that's a concern, then just wait. I think it's only like three episodes. So you got three weeks, so just wait the three weeks, then start season one, episode one, and run through it. But honestly, every episode, every season is good. Check it out. Jump on the train. It is worth it. Yeah, it's a great show, and it, it actually, for a TV show, has really good practical effects it's, and yeah. parts of it. And there's been quite a few things where I've been like, wow, that's fucking awesome. It shows a lot of awesome, awesome stuff. So, And one thing is, you know, we've watched many, many different shows, and a lot of shows, you know, you'll have those kind of filler episodes. I feel like we don't get a lot of filler episodes in From. It's typically something always happens or you find out something every episode. So I think that is one good thing about it. Yeah, absolutely. And that those Season of the Witch fans, you remember the stick it to the algorithm we talked about? <laughs> yeah. Well, we've stuck it so good that it's normally once we push put out the next episode, the week before it dies, that episode is still being pushed by you. They are yeah. being forced. We are forcing their hands. So <laughs> keep liking and commenting. Yeah. So with that being said, let's jump into Goosebumps, the Haunted Mask. Hello, boys and ghouls. If you want to stay up to date on what's going on with the show, talk about or submit your movie requests, or just say die, then I got good news for you. You can always find us at one of our social media accounts or our official website at GrindhouseHorrorPod.com Face Crook at the Grindhouse Syndicate Horror Podcast Insta Scam at GrindhouseSyndicate.Horror.Pod And many gore Which you can always find links for in the show notes as always And you know what I always say The morgue, the merrier. (laughs) So please subscribe or follow for alerts on new episodes. Now, back to the show, kitties. Frights, camera, action. (laughs) And if you really love us and don't want us to get a mask stuck to our face and find out that only an act of love can remove it, give us a review. The Haunted Mask is the feature-length series premiere of the television series Goosebumps. The episode is based on the book of the same name by R.L. Stein, and it is about Carly Beth, a timid girl who buys a Halloween mask that soon begins merging with her face. It first aired on October 27th of 1995 in the United States on the Fox Network, where it was viewed by 7.9 million households. In Canada, where the episode was filmed, it aired one day later on the YTV network. At the time, it had almost 3 million viewers and was YTV's highest rated episode. Catherine Long, who played Carly Beth, obtained a Gemini Award nomination for Best Performance in a Children's or Youth Program or Series. The Haunted Mask was released on VHS on March 12th of 1996. Billboard ranked the VHS as the 75th best home video of 1996. That's, I get that. That's good. That's good. But I man, mean, 75, that's way down there. You know what's really sad is I, I've seen that this episode, part one and part two, have never been released to DVD. Wow. It's surprising. Wonder why. With all the, the nostalgia and that. The 90s kids now grown up that would buy this for their kids. Very surprised that this has never been released to DVD or obviously Blu-ray either. That is really surprising because absolutely, you know, 
nothing against Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving, as many of our listeners know. But you can get a movie like Thanksgiving has been released on DVD, but you can't get this, which is at one time was like 75th on all of, you know, home media. Well, well, Thanksgiving probably went straight to DVD. That's how they made all their money. (laughs) Yeah, it did. They used to sell them right out of their apartment. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was really, really surprising. I would think that they would make their money back in, in printing and distribution costs. You know, a better, a better thing to compare it to is that shitty-ass movie, The Mean One. Oh, God. <laughs> this is literally better than that. Yeah. And this yeah. is for kids. Yes, it is. It is. Even taking the the, the nostalgic factor out of it, it's still better. better. It's yes. still better. It is better. It, you know what's even more surprising is that they haven't compiled all of the TV yeah. series and released them on DVD. Yeah, that is surprising. I mean, they keep doing these Goosebump reboots. So obviously no there's... One. Well, obviously, there's a, you know a market for Goosebumps, so you would think that they would come out like a box set for this. Yeah, because we're grown now, and a lot of us have kids, and, and love box this sets. is like our <laughs> in- introduction to horror. And, and get yes. a steel book of <laughs> Goosebumps, yes. please. I would 100% as a, a physical media collector and lover, I would buy a box set of these Goosebumps. I know we got some Australian listeners, so if any of you guys work at Umbrella... Make, yeah. it, make it happen. Yes, please do. And if you can get them to send out my Art Attacks <laughs> box set just just a couple days early, so I would early. appreciate it. I was, I was the most likely very first order. I got it five minutes after it went live. So, yeah, maybe just talk them into sending it a little early. So the episode is based on The Haunted Mask, which is the 11th book in the original Goosebumps series written by R.L. Stein and published by Scholastic. When Stein appeared at the top of the USA Today bestseller list in 1994, the CEO of Fox Kids at the time, Margaret LaRoche, took notice. She bought her son a copy of the Goosebump book, Say Cheese and Die, and his positive response to it led her to offer Scholastic a TV deal for the series. So one kid in a book is how we got this. One kid changed to so much. Yeah, he did. This was... Out of all the VHSs that we've ever owned growing up. Probably the most iconic. This is the one I remember the most, was your VHS. It had the the, the more fancy plastic case. It was, yeah, that it was a very big open. case, yeah. yeah. It was like the coffin case. Yeah, this, this was the one I remember more than anything else. So filming for Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask began in 1995 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Producer Steve Leviniton, uh, I can't say his fucking name, oh, fuck it. That's uh, good s- said the horror elements of the episode were toned, toned down because of concerns about the broad demographic appeal and the much younger kids who would be part of the audience. When they filmed the scene in which Carly Beth bites into the sandwich with the worm in it, they originally planned on using a rubber worm. However, they used a real worm at the insistence of actress Catherine Long, who played Carly Beth, and this scene had to be shot 12 times. That poor girl went through this 12 times yeah. trying to be a trooper, yeah. and they shot it in a way where you can barely fucking tell the worm was actually in the yeah. sandwich. Yeah. The Haunted Mask was released on VHS on March 12, 1996 by 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. This VHS contained a preview of the production for the Goosebumps episode a Night in Terror Tower, and a bookmark, which A Night in Terror Tower is one, one of my favorite episodes. And that was actually the very first Goosebump book, I believe. Was it? Yeah, I yeah. do believe so. A, a Night in Terror Tower, I'm pretty sure, was That's interesting one. I'm pretty sure it's based off of a real, um, some, you know, loosely based off of a real case where there was like a power struggle struggle for the, to become king in... England and you know there was like a 12 year old boy who became king and they stuck him and I don't think it was like his him and his brother in the tower and then they end up mysteriously they vanished you know like obviously was murdered but I'm pretty sure that's this is kind of where the idea for for that one came from yeah correction I was wrong it was welcome to dead house but I I would not have guessed that I do believe uh, so the 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 place that it's based off of and stuff yeah it was was, and it's one of the few goosebump books that are have any ties to reality yeah. yeah 
So it was also listed as the, as the 12th best-selling children's video for the same year. The VHS had sold 500,000 copies one week after its release and 2.5 million copies by August of 1996. A sequel to the episode titled Haunted Mass 2 first aired on October 29th of 1996. In this story, Steve, not interested in wearing his mother's homemade pirate costume, finds and puts on a mask with the vestige of an old man with spiders in his hair. John White replaced George Davis as Steve in The Haunted Mask 2. The Haunted Mask has themes of peer taunting and family frustrations. Children's Video Report wrote that at its conclusion, Carly Beth has to learn to love and accept herself if she is to find happiness. The, Ch the Chicago Tribune's Scott Blakely stated that the episode reveals the dark side of childhood cruelty towards those who find themselves out of step with their peers or the in-group. In 2012, R.L. Stein said that The Haunted Mask was his favorite Goosebumps episode. Complex.com named it the 10th best Halloween-themed TV episode and called it one of the scariest Goosebumps episodes. They stated that the sight of a conflicted Carly Beth bearing a mold of her real face in the cemetery while the haunting, the haunted mask becomes uh, real, and it's shocking and unsettling, even for a kid's horror series. It is very symbolic. Uh, like huh? I love that that added element of her carrying around the mask of herself. You know, symbolizing you know her her bearing herself, and it is at the at its core a very much a stay true to yourself and the dangers of giving in to like peer pressure and yeah. you know. Not not being yourself. All right, so let's talk about the mask. A big chunk of why most of us are here. Now, not many people knew where these props were. It's been a long time. But about five or six months ago, one of the masks popped up online, which opened the door for some info on some of these props. So a man named, I'm probably going to fuck his name up because it's weird, Ron Stefanuk not only created this mask, but he actually created all of the Goosebump monsters and props. And he has kept all of these in his studio this whole entire time he's had them. So there are two versions of this mask. We have one that was more of a prosthetic. This was the version that is like stuck to Carly Best's face, they actually used this one to like blend into her her face, like around her eyes and shoulders and stuff. The second one, which is the one that just popped up, this one was the one that it like would sit on the mask stand in the shop. It was also used in shots where it was being like held by an actor or being like put on or taken off by an actor and just like briefly worn by an actor like. Like the scene in the end with the little brother. That's this mask. So the guy who made it, he actually gifted it to the producer of the Goosebumps TV series back in 2008. And that guy had it until six months ago. When he then traded it to a collector named Trent Shy. Now, Trent Shy, he's a big Goosebumps fan. So he was stoked for this trade. And he then posted kind of the story of how he got it and some up-to-date HD photos of the mask in its current state. Now, the masks were made from foam latex, and it was apparently kept, like, in the sun for years, like, I guess, by a window. So it's not really in the best shape, but it's not in the worst shape either. It definitely has some extensive damage. But Trent plans on having some of uh, some minor repair work done to it, and he's also going to do some stuff that's going to take some steps to to preserve the mask. Yeah, I remember when those pictures came out. I didn't know any of the story behind it, but I I did remember them talking about him doing some stuff to preserve it and kind of bring it bring some life back into yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, he doesn't want it to look new. He wants it to still look old, but yeah. um when you actually look at the pictures like, you know, a big chunk of the cheek is gone, a big part of the bottom where it would like lay on your shoulder, that's all gone. So so I guess he just wants to fix those big damaged areas, but 
Just make it make it whole again. It's actually it? missing like most of the teeth now. So I don't know if he's going to go in and put the teeth back in it. I don't know. I think he should. I think yeah. he should do everything he can to make it whole. Not yeah. necessarily repaint it or yeah, bring yeah, it, yeah. you know, just make it look new, but just make it whole again. But if you would like to check out what the mask looks like now, you can find pictures of it on Trent's Instagram page, which is at Creature Feature Museum. And uh, I will, if I can remember, put that in the show notes for everybody. So you can go look and see what it looks like. Yeah, we're we're both very into masks and the, the mask making part of part of the movies. So I do remember this coming out and it was very clear that it was latex. By the way, it's kind of degraded over time. But I was wondering if the second version of it was, and I don't even know if they did this then, but it looked like on screen some early silicone use, like a silicone mask. Oh, maybe. Which is, that's why, like, she can make facial expressions. For those who don't know, there's actually companies that make silicone masks. They Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fucking amazing. They, they don't break down as fast as, like, latex and stuff, but they actually form to your face so you can make facial expressions and stuff under it. Trick or Treat Studios released a latex version of this mask. Yeah, I almost bought it. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's something that I do plan on buying at some point when I don't have 500 other things waiting to be bought in front of it. But it's awesome. But I was thinking how cool would it be? Uh, I don't remember the company that we were talking about a couple weeks ago that makes the really awesome silicone masks. They're expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks. But they're the ones you want, like, if you want it to look real, it's the ones you get. How awesome would it be to get this mask in a silicone version? Oh, yeah. That you could make the same facial expressions and stuff under. So, ratings, uh, because, I guess, because this was a kid's TV show, you know, we don't have our standard ratings. We do have, though, that 96% of Google users like this movie. That's probably not a very great rating system, but... um. Well, you know, take take our word on it's good. Well, I would think it was a lot of kids and then yeah, parents that grew up watching this that see it. So that doesn't surprise me. If you would like to watch this movie, you can currently find it. Um, you said you said you watched it on Netflix, so it's on Netflix. I I watched it on YouTube. They got part one and part two together for free on YouTube. If you want to check it out there. All right. So are you ready to jump into the plot of the haunted mask? Viewers beware, you're in for a scare. Yeah, I literally have that coming up right here. (laughs) So we start off by seeing the man himself, R.L. Stein, sitting in a mask shop. He introduces himself and tells us a quick rundown of the story we are about to see. And he then says, viewer beware, you're in for a scare. We then see the lime green oozing logo of Goosebumps with the title of the episode. And then we head right into the story. So we then jump to two young girls named Carly Beth and her friend Sabrina. And they're walking down a dark street headed into a pumpkin patch because Carly Beth waited till last minute to get a pumpkin. Sounds familiar. One of your hosts here just did the same thing. I did. I I do it all the time because I don't want to carve a pumpkin too early because they rot, especially here in the southern heat. But this year I waited extra late, yeah. and uh, it always cost me a fucking arm and a leg. Oh, damn. So on their way to this pumpkin patch, they come across a Halloween store that just showed up out of the blue. And that is where the uh, idea for Spirit Hall- Halloween was born. <laughs> this was it. This was the very first Spirit Halloween. But they're looking at all of these scary masks in the window. Carly Beth is kind of digging it, but her friend Sabrina gets creeped out and says, let's go. As the girls walk off, we see a creepy guy with a deformity on his face staring out of the window at the two girls. And I love this guy's black shirt and red tie. But it's got villain written on it. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, he's a very, like, everything about him is villain. It's either villain or Green Day. You can't have a, <laughs> a, a black black dress clothes and a red bright red tie like that. You're either villain or you're in Green Day. So the girls then finally arrive at the pumpkin patch where we quickly find out that Carly Beth is a bit of a scaredy cat. She's a very paranoid. By the way, is this like a free pumpkin patch? You just like, you just walk up at any time, day or night, and you just get a free pumpkin? Yeah, I don't remember these in the 90s. No, I don't think that that's the case. I think you still had to pay for them. No one would go through all the work to grow all these pumpkins and then just let anybody just come take them. Maybe because it was like, 
maybe if it's like Halloween night and they're like, oh, fuck it, yeah, we're not going to sell any maybe. more. And I don't feel like having to get rid of them, so just take them. So after getting jump scared by Sabrina, Carly Beth goes looking for a pumpkin and when she spots a good one and goes to pick it up, we see a hand come out of the hay, scaring her as the pumpkin begins to move. Carly Beth freaks out and tries to run away but runs into another pumpkin man who is standing behind her and basically what we see here is two pumpkins carved up like jack-o'-lanterns with human bodies. So obviously we got two people with pumpkins on their heads. They surround Carly Beth as she screams when they suddenly begin laughing and reveal themselves to be two fellow classmates, Chuck and Steve. And it becomes pretty evident that Chuck and Steve like to fuck with Carly Beth a lot. Yeah, I, I will say their pumpkin heads looked really good. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's even more so obvious when you see how awful their fucking costumes, their stupid pirate costumes that they wear, like... Yeah. This would have been a much better outfit. Those pumpkins are also huge. Yes, they're very, they're very, very big pumpkins. Very big pumpkins. They would be very heavy. I, yeah, I you would, would imagine that they're, they're fake pumpkins. I'm sure these are made from foam. But man, she gets really upset over this. Yeah. So Carly Beth gets pissed and takes off with Sabrina behind her, trying to tell her she had like nothing to do with this plan. And this is where we find out some of the shit that Chuck and Steve do to Carly Beth. She says that... Last time she stayed the night at Sabrina's, <laughs> they pretended to be burglars and act like they were breaking in the house. And then last <laughs> summer, they put a dead octopus on her. Now yeah, that's pretty rough, man. No, <laughs> that's bullying. That's not fucking with somebody when you're putting dead octopus on somebody. What about you're pretending to like you're gonna do a home invasion? Yeah, that's fucked up. And, and you know, Sabrina doesn't really have her back very much here. She's well, like, well, they're just joking. Well, I got and a theory. I'm, I'm like, well, you know, maybe, you know, you see it and you're like, well, you know, maybe Sabrina's just not being a very uh, supportive friend. But if they were acting like they were breaking into Sabrina's house, Sabrina had to be in on That's that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking she thinks this shit's funny as fuck, too. I'm thinking the deal with this pumpkin patch, because obviously she had to tell them that they were going there because there's no way they just laid there in the hay for hours hoping somebody came at 9 o'clock at night to get a pumpkin. Obviously, they were tipped off. And then the whole home invasion thing. I'm wondering if Sabrina's in on it. I'm glad you took that that way, too. I'm I'm sure that Sabrina is in. Like, you don't act like you're going to break into somebody's house without, like, one of them knowing it and their parents calling the cops and shit. Sabrina is also the bully. She's just... The bully in disguise. She's on the DL. She's really the worst of both of them <laughs> because she's setting her friend up and really allowing them to mastermind these plans. So Sabrina tries to calm her down by telling her that everyone knows she is scared of everything and she just needs to relax, which is probably not what she wants to hear. So after that, the girls head off and we see Carly Beth return home where her mom is excited to show her something that she made in art class. She walks her over to a mantle where we see a one by one scale plaster bust of Carly Beth, which is more creepy to me than any of the masks in this episode. It's the scariest thing in in this whole thing. Easy. For sure. You know, I'd be like, what the fuck, mom? I'm like, well, <laughs> why did you, why'd you make that? You already she had does that, say like, that. <laughs> un- uncanny valley thing going on where it's like, it's a face, but not quite like, a, it, yeah. it's awful. It's like well, a. Like a like a mannequin version of, of yourself. You. Well, apparently Carly Beth thinks it's creepy too, and she asks her mom why she made a bust of her, to which her mom replies, because I love you, which becomes really important later on. While her mom is talking to her, Carly Beth puts the bust back on the stand, swearing that it smiled at her, and her mom's like, you're letting this Halloween shit get to you too much, and oh, by the way, your duck costume is done. Yeah, Carly that's fucking Be- awful. Carly Beth's like duck costume, and her mom tells her that while at the mall, Carly Beth mentioned wanting to be a duck for Halloween, which is one of the lamest things I've ever heard. Yeah, but, you can't really get mad at your mom if you did say you that, that you would like to be a duck. I mean, this is a good mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, you yeah you, that you have to take fault there. Yeah, another thing is how does a kid 
Carly Beth's age have no idea about her Halloween costume the day before Halloween. It's obviously her mom makes her costume every year and just... She has, like, like, no idea what it's going to be. I don't know. And the duck costume is fucking awful. Uh, But in her mom's defense, how can you make a duck costume not awful? (laughs) Yeah. Unless you make her, like, a mighty duck or Or like a duck zombie. A a duck zombie. (laughs) Killer duck. That would be better. (laughs) But Carly Beth is kind of pissed about the duck costume because she wants to be something scary this year. As she walks off, we get a close-up of the bust when we suddenly see it smile. Oh, uh, we also see her little brother jump out and scare her in the duck costume. And as she runs off, the little brother repeats, Carly Beth's a scaredy cat, scaredy cat. So obviously everybody fucks with her. Should have said Carly Beth is a ducking scaredy cat. (laughs) We then jump to the next day at school where we see all of the kids like dressed in their costumes, eating lunch outside. Did you see that one girl pull her sandwich out of the bag and like one side of her bread is like burnt to a fucking crit? I mean, it's black. No. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's the very first girl they show as they're showing the outside scene and she pulls a sandwich out of her bag and one one side of the bread is totally a normal bread and she flips it over and it's like black as shit. And she like bites into it, like, and she's so happy. And I'm like, would her dad make her grilled cheese and no, like fucking this is, burn this one is what side? happens when your like 12 year old daughter starts making her own lunch and doesn't yeah. know how to work the toaster. And she's probably stoked because she made it. She was stoked, <laughs> yeah. So Carly Beth and Sabrina are sitting at a table talking about their trick or treating plans when Chuck and Steve walk up and place a talking pumpkin decoration in her face, which scares the shit out of her. Chuck then begins to apologize for what happened at the pumpkin patch the night before. But while Carly Beth is distracted, we see Steve place a worm in Carly Beth's sandwich. Now you cannot tell me Sabrina didn't fucking see that shit. Bro, Sabrina got the worm. I think she passed them the worm. She had to have seen it. And Carly Beth is like, way too fucking gullible here. Like if you're going to take the sandwich, you're like, okay, leave me alone. But why in the fuck? Would you eat a sandwich that these two that like very, very like hardcore bully you just gave you? Yeah. So they then walk off and sit at another table, cheerfully watching Carly Beth eat her sandwich when suddenly Carly Beth begins to gag, spitting out her food, revealing the worm in her sandwich. Chuck and Steve burst out laughing along with everyone else eating lunch. Carly Beth gets upset and runs off. I guess she just says fuck school and heads home because, like, that's the next shot. Yeah, yeah, fuck school. You're done. Yeah, you but, have no choice but to change schools at this point. I um, yeah, but like, you know, like, when you were in school, like, something bad happens, you could just be like, ah, going home. <laughs> uh, well, nothing this <laughs> bad ever happened to me. This would be, like, there's no coming back from eating a worm in front of the whole school <laughs> as a prank. Like, you're done. You, you just might as well change schools. Uh, She then says, fuck this shit, as she rips up and destroys the duck costume. She then digs out her life savings of $30, saying, it's my turn now, as she heads off to the mystery Halloween store. You remember being a kid and having like 30 bucks, like you, you could buy anything you wanted. Yeah, 30 bucks to get you you the whole costume. as As long as you got $20, you could typically buy whatever the fuck you went to the store to get. 30 man you you know got an extra 10 you're doing good yeah you ain't going to like a a actual fucking really nicely made mask no. store or no, we don't even have mask stores but like spirit halloween their high-end masks or going online or trick-or-treat studios any of that and buying a a, a literally a latex mask hand painted for anywhere near 30 bucks now So she heads inside where she encounters the creepy store owner who is kind of a dick and he's really surprised someone is in his store. He tells her that they are closed but he will give her five minutes to find a mask. He then gets a phone call while Carly Beth looks around the store and while looking around she notices like a science lab set up in the back room. She heads back there where she finds this shelf with six very scary masks sitting on stands by themselves. Some of these masks remind me of Hellraiser. 
Yeah, they do. There's there's one in particular that is super Hellraiser. Well, there's a Butterball, and then there's one that's like Chatterer. Right? Yeah, like as like the teeth. Yeah, I see yeah. that. Yeah, two of them actually. But to Carly Beth, there is one mask that sticks out above the rest. It is a green monster mask with a grimacing snarl displaying its very sharp teeth. She goes to pick it up when suddenly the store owner walks in screaming no at her. She quickly jumps and turns around and this is where we see all of the masks turn to look at her on their own. Carly Beth then apologizes and the store owner uh, calms down a bit telling her that these masks aren't for sale. When she asks why, he tells her that they are just too frightening, which to Carly Beth makes no fucking sense. Yeah, that (laughs) that doesn't make sense to me either. I'd be like, why do you you have them here? You're um, supposed to be selling masks. It's Halloween. I mean, I want to wear a very frightening mask, so I will like to purchase one of your Hellraiser masks here. Do, Do you think that she picked the best mask? Um... You know, I I don't know. I I I really like the one where his like gums are being pulled back, like the Chatterer mask. Yeah, that I, it's I, hard I, because it's so different I than think all the other masks. The Goblin is scarier than that one. There is one, and we never get a really good shot at it. But it's the one all the way to the right. It's almost like the face is like starting to rot. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. That one, I think, if any of them. Would have been a secondary pick. It would have been that one. It's, or, or if any of them would have been better than the one she picked. The goblin mask is awesome. But one of the things is like all the other masks are very similar. They're kind of, you know, same tone. They're kind of a human face. And this one is so different than all the other ones. So I can see, especially as a kid, going gravitating. And I mean, in the 90s, we love some lime green. So gravitating right to like the lime green monster mask with the fucking awesome teeth. I, yeah, I, think I totally it, get it. I think it's an awesome mask. I do. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think if she was going for the scariest one, I think it's either that or the one to the far right. Thank God before that she had when she was looking at the masks on the wall, the last one she had was like an alien with cotton yeah. stuffed in its mouth. And yeah. I'm like, please don't get the cotton the cotton mouth alien. <laughs> Like I get, like I guess it was like a joke on the a co- cotton mouth, but I don't get it. I don't like get why it. you would? I also don't understand why he's like, you got five minutes. All the ones on the wall are what, what's for sale, but the whole rest of the store had masks. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. He tries to just give her a gorilla mask that's out front, but she says that Chuck and Steve won't be scared by that. The store owner then asks, "Who the fuck is Chuck and Steve?" <laughs> To which Carly Beth tells him that they are two guys at school that constantly torture her and she is looking to get them back. This intrigues the store owner. He's like, we don't take cash or credit, but we do take good old fashioned revenge. I gotta say, (laughs) I do love some good revenge too. Dude, the look on his face when he's like, mmm, revenge? Yeah, I gotta say, like, I'm kind of with him there. There's not much this kid could have did to get me to sell some shit I didn't plan on selling, but revenge. Uh, yeah, I would I would have sold her the mask. Yeah. Revenge, revenge on some asshole kids, too. Yeah. And 30 bucks. You know, he gets this hard to resist a yeah. good 30 bucks. But he thinks about it, but then he changes his mind. He says he can't do it. She then offers him the $30, but he still says no because, you know, that's not a whopping amount of money. To an adult. He thinks about it, though. He really does <laughs> think hard about that 30 bucks. Well, back then, he's like, oh, 30 bucks, that's groceries for a week. <laughs> <laughs> she then just grabs the mask and tosses the money into the air while running off. He doesn't really make any effort to stop her as she runs out of the shop. She then realizes that she basically just shoplifted this mask. <laughs> and as she turns around and looks at the store, the shop owner closes the door and, and locks it. So he's, he's like, like you, fuck you, it. You remember that revenge shit, right? He's like, you're about to pay for stealing that mask. I feel like he's like, you've ran too far. It's not worth it for me to chase you down. <laughs> it's like, Just well, she did leave the 30 bucks. So I, okay. Yeah. She then runs home and puts on the mask where she uses it to scare her brother who I just want to point out is dressed as a big ass spider for Halloween, which is still bad, but it is better than a duck. It is much better. His mom hooked him up compared to a duck. Yeah. Still, I don't know why you would go as a giant spider, but whatever. Yeah, she talks in this like creepy voice when she has the mask on, which also scares her brother. 
She then tells him that it's just her, Carly Beth, to which he breathes a sigh of relief. She then attempts to take the mask off, but at first, it won't come off. And right before Carly Beth starts to panic, the mask lets go and she is able to remove it. As she gets ready to leave, her brother asks her how she changed her voice like that and Carly Beth kind of thinks about it for a moment, then admits that she has no idea. So, we now see Carly Beth in her new costume, which is the mask, a t-shirt, some overalls, and a fucking black trench coat. Where did this girl get a goth trench coat at? Uh, maybe out of the store. Well, she did. She did <laughs> run out with just the mask. I don't know. The the the, the overalls, not coveralls, because we don't. We learned. We learned that the overalls episode. are awful for this costume, <laughs> but now iconic. They like, were I couldn't, big. I couldn't see this without with the with the cover, the original cover, of the book, and then having it in this the show. I just couldn't see it any other way. I mean, they were big back then. Back in back in the early. To mid nineties, absolutely. Had to add those chest pockets. <laughs> you know, honestly, this kind of looks like the creepers coat from Jeepers Creepers because it has like that has like that second layer kind of over the shoulders, like the creepers coat does. But yeah, I don't know where the fuck she got that cool ass shit. Yeah, the 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 trench coat and the the mask, and then the awesome touch of the head she goes for. I gotta say, she has a better costume than 99% of these other kids oh, walking around. Yeah. So right as she goes to head out the door to meet Sabrina for trick-or-treating, we see her put the mask back on and look in the mirror, where we see the mask, like, suck to her face. She then runs back into the living room, grabbing the plastered bust of herself, placing it on a long stick, and putting a red scarf under the neck of the bust. So next up, we see her walking to Sabrina's house where we get that classic Halloween of kids just all over the place in costumes with bags of candy, lit up jack-o'-lanterns all over, yard decorations, and orange fall leaves all over the ground. Essentially, what we experienced probably most of our Halloweens when we were growing up. Every time I see the scenes like these, like it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, we are blessed to live in a neighborhood where most of the people who live around us bring their kids to this neighborhood to trick or treat. Although it was it was a little slower than it was in yeah, past year was. this year, but even then, it's nowhere near the experience that we got growing up. Yeah, with the Halloween in the nineties, most people take their kids out and they're done by the time it's getting dark. The ones the 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 few maybe a quarter of them that still are out after dark. It's mostly uh, kids with their parents. You, you you don't get this, like, I just remember going out with my friends yeah. in the neighborhood and going trick-or-treating, and that's where all hours. the other kids were. And yeah, for hours, man. Yeah, man, it, it's 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 sad. I, I, I do hope that us lovers of Halloween can rally together and get Halloween back to this one day and destroy all drunk-or-treats. Drunk-or-treats should be illegal. They should. They Whoever should, becomes awful. president, please ban trunk or treats. I know it's not constitutional, but we can use an executive order for this one time. This one time. So right outside of Sabrina's house, we see her like fucking with these two other kids, thinking that they are Chuck and Steve. Turns out they weren't, but that doesn't stop Carly Beth from being an asshole to them. And this whole time that she is talking in this scary voice, it's interesting to know that even the evil voice is Canadian <laughs> because she yells at them kids like, I'm not sorry, <laughs> which is very Canadian. It was, I love it. Very, very Canadian. <laughs> like yeah. even evil is Canadian accent. It has a Canadian accent. It's, it's evil in Canada. It just makes sense. <laughs> I'm sure it's like evil, but still loves to play hockey and have maple syrup. A boat. Uh, so, so, yeah. So Sabrina then comes out. She's wearing a homemade cat costume, That's which is awful. lame. It's awful. <laughs> it's, it's not even a good cat costume. No. There are a lot of homemade costumes in this episode. I only ever had one homemade costume, which was probably like 1992 or 93. And then I feel like the homemade costumes really faded out after that. 
Yeah, I don't remember much. So I the, the one time I had a homemade costume, and it was I, I I wanted to be Kane, the wrestler Kane for Halloween, and it I don't know if you consider it homemade because my face was painted like the. Oh, mask. I think it was, but at, you had but the sweatshirt that mom, you made or whatever. Yeah, mom had yeah. to come up with some type of way to have a shirt that she, kind of resembled. She literally bought a red sweater in like painted the black stripes on over the, over it that's what she did yeah mom was awesome sometimes man that's that's one that that's when you look back on now and you're like yeah, yeah I, I don't even hardly remember it but i'm knowing that she took time to to make sure this stupid like kid wrestling <laughs> thing was to, at least looked half decent yeah my first one was dad made me a grim reaper costume and he made like the you know what's it called the scythe or whatever he made it out of a broomstick and he literally like out of a piece of plywood cut the blade and painted it like silver and then painted red blood on it. It's the most dad ever yeah. did, right? <laughs> For any holiday. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Never put forth much effort after that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say too, this, this, the, the, that year with the cane outfit was the one year I remember I could not fucking wait to get home and be done trick or treating. Because like 30 minutes in, the paint started shrinking as it dried, <laughs> and it was driving my fucking face nuts. So it is one of my least favorite Halloween memories. But Sabrina's like, dude, that mask is awesome, and what's up with that fake head you're carrying around? And Carly Beth says that the bust is who she used to be, which is kind of confusing to Sabrina. After chatting about Chuck and Steve for a moment, they then head off to do some trick-or-treating. So while they're walking down the street, we see Carly Beth kind of like scaring other kids, even at one point like freaking out on Sabrina and then telling her she's just joking. She's pretty much just enjoying being on the other side of the fence here because she's like normally the one getting scared, but now she's doing the scaring. Uh, They then walk up to a house and ring the doorbell where we see a mom and her two young kids open up the door holding a bowl of candy. The lady then compliments Carly Beth's mask when suddenly one of the kids asks Sabrina if she's supposed to be a giant hamster, (laughs) which I fucking died laughing at. Because once you see it, it never becomes a cat again. (laughs) Definitely a hamster. Uh, So one of the kids then says that she doesn't like Carly Beth's mask because it's too scary. Carly Beth then leans down and tells her, you better watch what you say to me if you know what's good for you. This causes a little girl to run off back into the house with the mom getting upset at Carly Beth. Carly Beth then tells the mom, you better stop talking or you'll get what's coming to you too. Then like the true villain she has become, grabs one piece of candy <laughs> and runs off. I was going to say this, this evil entity of a mask <laughs> still had the manners to only take one piece of candy so for you little shits out there who grab handfuls of candy when you're not supposed to yeah this that's for you even evil has enough manners to not steal handfuls yeah then the mom tells sabrina that she's calling the police what's she gonna tell the police yeah, she stole I candy thought that too i'm like she's what? trick-or-treating well, I mean, wait, she, she she scared my kid. It's fucking Halloween. But, oh, well. <laughs> Carly Beth, she also says, did you see the look on that old bag's face? That lady was like 30, if that. <laughs> well, She's an old they're bag. Like, <laughs> they're like 12. Yeah, but now, like, that made me think, like, do 13-year-olds see me as, like, an old man? That was the writer's way of saying, did you <laughs> see that old bitch's face? Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't put it in. She's, like, I rewound it, too, and, like, there, I don't think she was that old. And I'm like, shit, she could have been, like, 28, 29. She she's may not even been 30. Probably, like, her, her fucking, I don't know, if she's 30, she could be around close to, maybe a little younger than her mom. Yeah. She probably sees her mom as old. That's weird. So Sabrina confronts Carly Beth about her attitude, which Carly Beth responds that it's the mask making her do it, and she's tired of always being picked on. Her and Sabrina then kind of get into an argument when Carly Beth runs off, leaving Sabrina to trick-or-treat alone. We then cut to Chuck and Steve, who are dressed as pirates, which is better than a duck, a spider, or a giant hamster cat which but, is what we've seen so far but not better than their jack-o'-lantern heads that they not used better. to scare her which yeah, was, i agree 
way, way better than these stupid pirate costumes. But yeah, they are, for some reason, hanging out in front of a cemetery, which you know, I don't really judge. I could see me doing that as a child. Yeah, I was about to say, no, I, I dig it, man. If we had a creepy cemetery in our neighborhood and Halloween night going to the cemetery, we would have definitely fucking did that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It would be weird as an, as an adult now to see some kids hanging out in the cemetery, but... I guess I'd kind of think about it. Like, ah, well, I guess I'd do that, too. Yeah, we did shit like that. We just didn't have a cemetery. It was like we sneaked down. Let's, let's go down in the old burnt-down house at night. Yeah. It's kind of similar. Uh, they then head into the cemetery and dump their bags of candy out on top of a tombstone to, like, sh- sort through it. Uh, we also cut back to Carly Beth, who is just destroying people's Halloween decorations. I would be fucking pissed if some fucking kids destroyed my yard like that yeah this is where sam needs to come in and kill her cut her in half for disrespecting halloween halloween decorations are not cheap in like like our yard for example i've made like over half the shit out there yeah i Um, have i mean this is a lot of hours of work and time and money to, to just make it and if I caught a fucking kid out there breaking that shit, I would be like, I thought it was an adult, and I beat it. I beat his ass. <laughs> yeah, the, between, I mean, God, I dropped over over a grand in the yard. You dropped money on lights and stuff. Uh, we have animatronics, plus the stuff like, I mean, spider webs aren't expensive, but you know, you got to rebuy those every. There's a lot of money that goes into the fucking yard yeah. and the, the the fog machines, and I gotta say. I would, I would probably punch a kid. Just gonna say it. Just gonna say it. Just tell I, might, it I might punch that kid. Just tell the cop. Like yeah, they talked with a deep voice. I thought it was a a, a small person. <laughs> so while Chuck and Steve are fucking around in the cemetery, Carly Beth finds them and finally gets her chance to scare them. She jumps out at them and they kind of immediately figure out it's Carly Beth. But she then holds out the stick with the bust on it and tells them that this is now Carly Beth. She then demands that they apologize to the head, and the boys start getting scared, and Steve says that the on- they, they only fucked with her so much because they liked her, which isn't a good enough excuse for Carly Beth, who is getting more and more worked up as this goes on. That is an awful excuse. <laughs> yeah. She then demands they apologize again, holding the stick out towards them. They then both say that they are sorry, or sorry, when suddenly the bust comes alive and says help me please help me this obviously freaks the boys out when carly beth then throws the bust at them and they take off running in fear i think this whole scene right here is the coolest part for one the detail so in this scene is where you can see the sweat coming out of the mask if you look close, the mask is like super sweaty. I watched so, it on YouTube, so I didn't have that really good HD that yeah. you watched it on. <laughs> you should have, should have watched it on Netflix. Uh, yeah, so this by this point, you can tell the mask has fully gotten a hold of her to where now the mask is like sweating. But also, the Carly Beth begging for help from this this mask on a staff of her actual face, like showing she's, she's still inside there and yeah. has lost control. That's, that's kind of deep, man. Yeah. That's kind of deep for a, a kid's... Uh, kid. I mean, I don't know if they get away with that today, but this is good shit. Yeah. Carly Beth then celebrates her accomplishment with giddy dancing, laughter, and even a howl at the moon. She then picks up the bust and buries it in the ground of the cemetery. Later on, we see Sabrina find Carly Beth walking down the street when she stops her and they have a brief conversation. Sabrina then says that they should head back to her house to look at the candy that they got, so they do that. Uh, We then jump to Sabrina's kitchen, where she is sitting at the table sorting through her candy, when Carly Beth says that she is burning up in the mask and it is time to take it off. But she quickly realizes it is painful when she tries to remove it, and it has faded into her skin. So it's basically her actual skin now. This whole thing, this is just a coming of age. (laughs) <laughs> she buries she buries her mask, which symbolizes her old self. She's now the bully. She's yeah. she's she's grown. So she starts freaking out, and Sabrina tries to help her. Sabrina then looks down Carly Beth's shirt, where she discovers that there is now no bottom to the mask. It is just her skin now. 
Carly Beth then runs to a mirror where she notices that her eyes are now different. So she now has like the monster's eyes. So Carly Beth freaks out and takes off running out of the house, leaving Sabrina scared. We then see that she has ran back to the creepy shop where she got the mask. When she walks up to the door, the shop owner opens it, let, letting her inside. She tells him that she can't get the mask off, to which he responds, I know, I have been expecting you. She then tells him that she wants it off, but he tells her that he can't remove it. She asks why not, and he says because it's not a mask, it's a real face. So he then tells her a brief history about the masks. He says that he originally made them to be the most beautiful masks ever. They were basically really attractive like human faces, but they suddenly started to become deformed even with him doing everything he could to stop the transformation. He then named them the unloved ones because no one could ever love something so hideous. But Carly Beth loved the monster mask so much that it basically bonded to her skin. Man, I th the, so the whole premise here, that this is what I took from it. So obviously he has, he's like, his actual, him is, is some monstrous. Well, yeah, it, what we see is not yeah, cause him. He mentions that his face now is a mask, and that's why he got this creepy thing on the face that's kind of turning. So each one of these masks, he has made these beautiful masks and worn them as his actual face. And they have all slowly warped into these hideous things. And he's had to remake them. And he talks about, like, taking that mask off and showing her. Man, I wish we could see. Like, what is so hideous underneath his, his face of a mask? You have that, to ask R.L. Stein. You know, whenever he first says, I've been expecting you, I'm like, maybe he's a good guy, man. He waited on Halloween night yeah, at this true. store for I hours. I would home. <laughs> yeah, just because he knew she was going to need help. But then he puts her in front of this mirror, and he's like, did he wait the whole time just for a whole I told you so? You should have yeah. fucking listened to me, kid. This is you. This yeah. is your face now. You're fucking stuck with it. He then tells her that this is her face now forever, to which she does not take this news well. I just kind of picture her like going to school, graduating from high school, <laughs> getting a job with this fucking mask on still. I love when he like forces her in front of the mirror yeah. and he's like, look at it. Look at look your at face. It. That's you. <laughs> he then says that there might be one solution to her problem since she has only taken the mask off once. He then tells her that only she can remove it and it will take a true symbol of love to get it off, which Carly Beth is confused about. She then starts freaking out on the guy and she asks him who he really is. He then tells her that he is the man who made the masks as he spins her around to face them. She then asks him why he made them and he tells her that he was like her once. He didn't love himself very much and decided to make the mask to hide his imperfections. But he discovered that his issues were on the inside and not the outside. This is what caused the mask to turn hideous and is the same reason that his face is beginning to look fucked up. He says that soon this mask will be on the shelf with the others, and maybe he should show Carly Beth what's underneath. She then starts freaking out when suddenly the masks begin to come to life and float towards her. Fair warning, there's some very rough CGI here, <laughs> but... It's fantastic. It's, it was the early 90s, and this is a low-budget kids' TV show, so... I think we should give it a pass. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't hold it on the CGI. The CGI in big budget movies wasn't great at this time. I either. mean, it's good for a kid's show. Like, it's great. I'm surprised they even put that in there. Yeah, and the, in the graveyard scene, you can actually see how they did it. So they obviously cloaked a bunch of actors in, in green, green yeah. and used a green screen and had them put the mask on because at one point somebody's body like blocks out part of one of the faces <laughs> beyond it. It's kind of funny. Uh, so she then takes off running out of the shop with the masks in pursuit and she heads straight for the cemetery to find the bust that she buried. As she is attempting to dig up the bust, we see the mask still coming for her saying please join us. Carly Beth is like fuck that and pulls out the bust from the ground. The masks then circle her when she suddenly holds the bust up in the air telling the mask that this is her, the real Carly Beth. This freaks, freaks the masks out. I guess they're 
allergic to symbols of love because they get the fuck out of there quick. Once they are gone, Carly Beth is able to easily peel the mask off, which causes her to breathe a huge sigh of relief, to which she then returns home. When she arrives there, we see her give her mom a big hug, telling her it's been a long weird night and she has learned a lot about herself. She then turns around to see her brother step out of the room now, wearing the mask himself, as he looks up at her and says trick or treat. And that is the end of The Haunted Mask. We then get the outro by R.L. Stein and hear that oh so familiar Goosebumps theme song. So there was actually a different ending, slightly different ending that they took out because they said it was it was too scary for kids. And it's it's the same ending that we get, but it's like Carly Beth is like screaming, like just they play this super creepy music in the background and she has a total scream queen moment. Like just really? gutturally screaming. And it was a really dark ending. And what's interesting is so in the book, you, you know how he mentions you've only taken it off once. Yeah. Well, whoever whoever puts it on next is stuck. That's how they're forever stuck. Oh, I and her didn't brother, even know that. that that was the whole twist at the in the book is he puts the mask on and the book ends. He's now stuck like this forever. And in the he's mask, he's got to go to third grade looking like yeah. that. So in the mask part two, he's never mentioned. Because I thought the mask part two, I thought it picked up right where this one left off. It does. It picks up with the same characters. I think it picks up the year later, or maybe the same night. I but, thought it was the same. But night. I do know in the book, he's her brother's never mentioned. Like he's oh, gone. Man. So. That was the, I, I guess they figured that the screaming and the creepy music was, was too much, so they took her screaming completely out and changed the music to make it kind of more of a positive thing. But uh, yeah, the actual ending is her little brother puts his mask on and he can never take it off. That's why he asked her how many times has she taken the mask no, off. No, I thought it like reset per person. Like each person gets one. No, <laughs> one removal. <laughs> no, it's, you know, whoever puts it on next is, is stuck, and her little brother puts it on. So he's, how the fuck he's stuck does that like that? How the fuck and does the shop guy get the mask off? Well, see, that's one thing they never. Oh, explain. he never takes it off the first time, though. He just puts yeah. it on, wears yeah. it for like a year, and then takes it yeah, off. Yeah, once it turns ugly, he sculpted a new pretty face to put on, and oh. I guess it over time he's went through six of these things. But yeah. It's, it's actually a really dark ending, if you think about it, that he, in in the, the, the part two of the book, he's never mentioned. Huh. Like, this mask takes him over, and he's, I don't know if he's done took off to live with the other goblin mask people. <laughs> they sent him away. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I can't, I can't have this. Yeah. Uh, also, it's really interesting to note that her mom tells her when she makes that bust of her daughter, that really creepy bust, to be careful, it's plaster. And at one point, the mask, she throws it on the ground. Yeah. Which, insinuating that if it would have broke, she would have been stuck like that forever. Well, couldn't her mom just, like, do something else to show she loves her? (laughs) I don't know. That that was the whole point of them putting it in there, but I do know that she throws it down twice. I don't know if there's like a time limit thing. Like, because he does tell her you have to hurry. So I think maybe, I don't know, once it's on for so long. They never explain how he takes the mask off. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Interesting, though. Do you have some facts for this episode? Um, Yeah, I do have a couple facts. One of them was actually the worm thing, which we already talked about. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really interesting. Outside of there being a an actual original ending that still, they did say that that ending is out there somewhere, huh. but it's unlikely to ever be found because it's in a studio somewhere. So this was actually where, as all the other Goosebumps came out as the part of the Fox Kids lineup, this was actually a Halloween special. It's the very first yeah, one. Yeah, I remember that. So when she is in the mask store, one of the masks, and I didn't pause it and go back and look, but one of the masks is a mask of R.L. Stein's face. 
<laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He doesn't have really a great face. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I'm sure they made that mole a he, lot bigger than... <laughs> he has a face for writing books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny, because Brooke was like, well, I know he made all this money. Why didn't he get that mole removed? And I'm like, He's, that's an author's mole. <laughs> like, if you write good books, you got to have a mole you like you gotta that get somewhere. If you hit the bestsellers, you get a mole in the mail. <laughs> I hope <laughs> <laughs> you get you get uh, it just gets bigger. Yeah, like the the more New grow. York Times bestsellers, it just gets bigger and bigger. I wonder if they have like a like a Scholastics bestseller because like somebody like R. L. Stein, who's read all Maybe. these banger books, you know, he's not going on the New York Times bestsellers. He was on. I, I talked about it at the beginning. He was on um like the USA Today bestseller list or yeah. something like that. Maybe that. I, I thought maybe Scholastics would have one. Cause you, you know how many Goosebump books have been sold at book fairs? Uh, like, they got to be... Hundreds of millions, probably. The, like, highest-selling book fair item. that They literally created the... They put the book fair on the map. You know, we were talking about this recently. We were wondering if Goosebumps books were still in book fairs, because that was, like, the staple probably. of us growing up, is when we would get the book fair every year... I, and I'm sure you too, would go look for Goosebumps books. Oh, yeah. It was the first thing I looked for. Yep. So I actually recently took my daughter to her first book fair, and they actually let us, they did a Halloween thing, and we got to actually go in there with them. And yes, the answer is yes. They still do have Goosebump books. Is it the old fair. ones or is it, it is, new ones? It, it is the, so they have the original books, but they have different covers. Which huh. oh a, yeah, I seen that they came out with and they weren't nowhere near as good. And I don't know why because the original covers, the artists that did them, like those are those are what really grabbed us in originally to these books. When you seen those covers, you know most of the Goosebumps books that I read, and I read a lot of them. Like at one point, was it like thirty or forty of them I ordered off of eBay? Well, I had Mom order off of eBay. But I would base the next one I would read off of the cover. How cool the cover was. Yeah, so. I remember when I was in like middle school, they they actually you remember how the the where it says goosebumps, it actually had bumps on it that you could feel. Mm-hmm. They took that off and it was just smooth like the rat. And I was like <laughs> I was like, that was my first step into getting older. I was like, no, they don't make them like they used to. No, <laughs> no there's they, the ones I actually ordered though, they had so this was back when eBay, it was like a lot of like 30 yeah. or 40 goosebumps. But this is for, I don't know how eBay is now. I think it's much different. This is back when you actually bid and had bidding wars on eBay. They still have, they still have that. So everything I bought off eBay as an adult, I feel like I just did the buy now. But uh, I remember back then, like the buy now was very rare because the price was much more. You would be literally updating on the old AOL internet, updating and waiting and waiting and waiting, hoping nobody else outbid you. There's always those assholes that will wait until the last minute to fucking just outbid you by like a penny. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, as far as facts, that's, that's pretty much it. The other big one, you know, there's not a whole lot out on no, this because not. it's it was a kid's TV show, but it's a great one. I had fun. I had fun rewatching it. I had fun talking about it. It's definitely something that you can forget because it's been around so long and it doesn't pop up very often. But it was—it is something that I would like to revisit every Halloween. I know that we revisited it this Halloween just because, by chance, your kid fucking started watching it out of nowhere. I think it was during the summer, and it kind of reminded me about it again. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad that we we covered it on this little fun episode, and it was a good time. Another thing I forgot that they're doing, and you've actually seen it, so I just bought the Haunted Mask 4, but they did it, they've redone it into, like, comic books for, like, yeah, l- yeah. L- smaller kids, so that was really cool. Yeah, I, I enjoy covering this, though. Yeah, this it was, was fun. This is one where every time I see it, it just, you get that nostalgia. Yeah, hopefully people that listen to this, it kind of encourages them to go back and watch it. Like we said, you can find the really good version on Netflix, or you can find the really shitty quality version on YouTube. The quality on YouTube is not like unwatchable. It's just not, it's not HD. But once again, we thank you guys for listening. We will be back with our full-length episode next Monday. 
please give us a follow or like if you enjoy the show. Check out the website. Check out our socials. Tell us your favorite Goosebump episodes or Goosebump books or whatever. You can hit us up. We'll talk about Goosebumps with you. Tell a friend, a family member, or your local creepy shop owner about the show. We hope to see you next time.